Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Françoise Wilhelmi de Toledo. I'm the scientific director of the Buchinga Wilhelmi Clinics, fasting clinics specializing in long term fasting in south of Germany and south of Spain. I present you today our last publication in the Journal of the American Heart Association, and the title is Blood Pressure Changes in 1610 Subjects with and without antihypertensive medication during long-term fasting. Long-term fasting was defined by us and by others as a period of fasting of 5 to 20 days or more. Uh, we published that in a review in Annals of Medicine. My co-workers and co-authors are Franziska Grundler from um, Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinic, Robin Menage from the King's College in London, and Andreas Michalsen, uh, La Charité in Berlin, and myself. This article documents blood pressure changes in a very large cohort. Um, in average, they fasted 10 days with a multidisciplinary concept and medical supervision. Single subjects fasted shorter periods, but most of them fasted even longer, and one subject fasted till 41 days. The total cohort could be divided in three groups. First, 920 persons were normotensive, meaning that the blood pressure was not um, was below 140 to 90, which is uh, the maximal blood pressure which is tolerated by the um, guidelines of the heart associations. And uh, the rest, 60, 90 persons, were hypertensive, means they had blood values over 140 to 90, sometimes much higher. And part of them was medicated with one up to four drugs. It was 377 persons. And the other ones were not medicated. They probably didn't even know that they had blood, uh, high blood pressure. High blood pressure is an important and widespread risk for life-threatening diseases, especially heart and cardiovascular diseases especially myocardial infarction and stroke. And it's caused by an unhealthy lifestyle mainly, including in particular stress, obesity, bad or poor nutrition, even sometimes malnutrition together with obesity, excessive salt, sugar and alcohol intake, smoking and lack of exercise. The official steps to treat hypertension is first, according to the recommendations, is to change lifestyle. And the physician is supposed to um, um, teach the patient how to do it. Um, this teaching is not easy, it takes a long, long time, and many, many times uh, it doesn't succeed. Uh, and so the patient is uh, put on medication. This medication can be a single, medi uh, single drug or a combination of one to four drugs. Um, the drugs therapy is efficient, but has side effects in many cases. So what are the side effects? First of all, dizziness, sometimes even fainting, insomnia, uh, headache, um, in, uh, sometimes depressions, even impotence. And uh, physiologically, you have sometimes too low sodium in blood, hyponatremia, hypokaliemia, which is too low potassium in blood, or too small blood volume. All that leads to a difficult, um, well, a diminishment of the um, life quality, but also a bad adherence to uh, the drug treatment. And many people are not compliant because of the side effects. So non-pharmacological strategies like, for instance, nutritional strategies are proved to have uh, big effects and also fasting periods short or like we show in our study, uh, long-term fasting. So you remember our cohort, 1,610 humans, 62% um, were women, and um, they were either normotensive or hypertensive, medicated or not. We saw with the total group a decrease of the blood pressure. The two values, the first one called the systolic value and the second one called the diastolic value. 
the diminution of blood pressure by, uh, um, by long-term fasting has been already published by ourselves uh, in 2019 in PLOS One with a large cohort too and by other authors. But the interesting in our study is that we divided the groups afterwards. And what happens to the subgroups, the normotensive subjects? Um, they were 920. They showed a moderate decrease, which is good, because if they have already a normal blood pressure, uh, sometimes they just come from the upper part of the norm to the lower part of the norm, which is a very positive. But it shows that through long-term fasting, even if you fast a long time, um, it doesn't go below norm. And even to our surprise, we had a subgroup of 69 women having low blood pressure, values under 100 to 60. And we saw an increase, a slight increase of their blood pressure, uh, bringing them more energy and uh, well, well-being. Now, let us consider the hypertensive group. We have, of course, the ones who take no medication and they are higher in the blood pressure, which is understandable. And this is the group who had the biggest reduction in their systolic uh, blood pressure, going from 140 in average to 100, 126. And in the diastolic values, going from 93 to 83. So they could normalize their blood pressure in some cases. Uh, but um, from the whole group, 190% had totally normal uh, blood pressure after the fasting. On note, we could notice that the people with the highest blood pressure uh, at the beginning of the fasting had the greatest reduction. Uh, some subjects, we had a little subgroup with very high blood pressure values of 160 over 100, and um, they could normalize their values to 135 to 87, which is just below the maximum uh, level of norm. Now, what about the medicated subjects? When a person with hypertension and, and an antihypertensive medication come to fasting, then you have to monitor the blood pressure very regularly. Of course, why? Because it's decreasing. And so the effect of the fasting and the effect of the medication is similar. So you need to monitor and slowly um, eliminate uh, the drug or the drugs and or uh, lower the dosage so that the persons don't faint, don't have dizziness and other problems they can have if uh, they come in a hypotensive situation. So what happened with them? Um, they reduced their blood pressure, which sometimes was a little bit elevated despite of the drug medication. They decreased and continued to decrease the blood pressure, although we could eliminate the drugs. And in 25%, we stopped the medication. In 50% of the cases, we diminished the, the dosage considerably, and only a small part of the group uh, stayed at the same dosage of antihypertensive medication, despite of fasting periods. An interesting finding is that the longer the people fasted, the larger the blood pressure decrease, especially if they had high values at the beginning. So it's an argument to recommend long-term fasting. And one detail that we could show also in this uh, study is that the people feel well. We used uh, two tools. The one first was the VHO5, um, measuring mental well-being, and it increases considerably. And the other was a visual scale for the degree of um, relaxation, and it increases also uh, considerably. In other words, uh, people fantasize sometimes that fasting periods must be uh, agonizing experience, but it's exactly the contrary. If you are in a good setting, in a, with a good program and good uh, professionally accompanied, then it can be a very enjoyable and, and life-changing experience. So now, do, how do we explain the positive effects of fasting on blood pressure? Of course, the weight loss is important, but not only. There is also a diminution of the weight circumference, 
reflecting the diminishment of metabolic active visceral adipose tissue, which is uh, negative, it triggers uh, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, and others. And of course, you have an interruption of salt intake, of sugar intake, uh, leading to a diminishment of uh, insulin resistance and of alcohol intake. And in most of the cases, people can also stop smoking, which is an, a very collateral, very positive effect, and it doesn't even uh, cost them a lot of efforts. So. All, uh, all together we have this effect, but then we have very specific effects of the fasting which are similar to the effects of antihypertensive medication. They uh, increase the excretion of sodium, the fasting, activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is a system which decelerates the rhythm of our body and causes also uh, blood vessel dilatation. So from these results, we can conclude that the higher the blood pressure at the beginning of the fasting, the longer the fasting, the bigger the effects of fasting on lowering blood pressure. In the same way, when the people had at the start of their fast uh, pathological metabolic values, they had too high BMI, reflecting too high weight, um, too high um, uh, blood uh, sugar levels, um, the stronger the effects of long-term fasting. So it improves the metabolic parameters and at the same time it diminishes the blood pressure. Uh, this and more conclusion could be drawn from very complex statistical calculation and machine learning models. So this very large cohort, um, probably the largest uh, cohort of humans fasting uh, long-term, uh, not only obese people, but also many normal weight people, uh, we could conclude that when um, it can be a complementary treatment of high blood pressure, um, especially when uh, the um, drug treatment fails to control adequately the blood pressure values, uh, especially when side effects are really a problem and also and the number of people in that category is growing when people are keen to try, especially at the onset of the blood, high blood pressure, to try to do through lifestyle changes, um, uh, lowering of the blood pressure, controlling their blood pressure just by um, own uh, self-healing power, uh, which is, for instance, when you uh, change your nutrition, you move more, when you uh, diminish the stress or, or just uh, try to tend to a better emotional balance, you, you, you enjoy food which has less salt, most of the time is the food you cook at home, less sugar and less alcohol. And of course you stop smoking because this is a bad habit. And what I uh, advise to you, fast fast and don't be afraid even uh, of long-term fasting because this is a very, very profound experience. For that, you need to be in a special setting, a professional setting with a medical accompaniment, especially if you take drugs. And uh, I thank you for your attention. And I um, remember you that you find in the description um, all our recent publications, and there are more than 10 on long-term fasting in very large cohorts and their benefits on oxidative stress, blood pressure, and many other parameters. So thank you and have a good day. Mm -hmm.